So I'm the woman you love to hate. <laughs> and I, I have to say thank you for that. That means the part came across the way it was supposed to. Victor mentioned that I, I came to spend the evening in, in a little library next to the duck pond. Well, I am a homegrown girl. I, I grew up on Long Island, I live in Garden City, and I spent many happy hours at that duck pond. I, I have often, I was just asked uh, uh, for, for an interview on, on Channel 12, what do I do to relax because the schedule is so busy? My dream is to get into my car and drive to beautiful places. There are so many on Long Island. And Roslyn and this duck pond and this little area has been one of my destinations since I can remember. My mother and I used to come here to Roslyn and Cold Spring Harbor and Locust Valley and uh, Manhasset to the Americana, who doesn't go to this beautiful Miracle Mile. And uh, just so many things that I enjoy about living on Long Island. And especially at this time of year, I have... Um, uh, because of uh, all my children being moved from New York to Los Angeles, I've been spending a lot of time in L.A. this year, this last year and a half, and I was so sad that I wasn't going to be here for spring. And I know you all have had the worst winter ever, but you know as New Yorkers how much you appreciate spring. Oh my good, the flowers really did come back, and the leaves really are coming back. And uh, it was it's such a gift. I am not only happy to be home, I am euphoric to be home and catch a glimpse of this beautiful springtime we have outside. This is, uh, this is brand new territory for me to be introduced as an author, as a New York Times best-selling author. This is beyond my wildest dreams. I never thought I was going to be somebody who would write a book. Uh, publishers over the last 10 years or so have, have written and asked, you know, if I would write a book, and I just didn't think I would. But then about a year ago, my son came to me, and he said out of the blue, he didn't know anything about publishers writing to me. He just out of the blue said to me one day, you know, Mom, I think you should write a book. And I said, you do, really? I said, I just never thought that I would. And he came back two or three times. And I said, but Andreas, most celebrities now when they write a book, don't you think that the public uh, is expecting some kind of revelation about drug rehab or abuse of some kind, and I'm lucky, and I mean that truly, I, I'm lucky not to have had those things in my, in my background, but it didn't mean anybody would want to read my book. And he said, you know, Mom, I know how you, how you, you always think, you know, that you, you're humble, but I think you should write a book. For one thing, all the girls that I date, once they know you're my mom, they want to know how did you do it, and how do you do it, and what's your story? Because everybody knows Erica Kane, but nobody knows you. So something magical happened suddenly when my son said it. You know, I just perked right up and I thought, here is this amazing opportunity to speak to all the generations. So many generations. Someone came up to me last week at one of the book signings and said, you know they tell us that cotton is the fabric of our lives, but really it's all my children. <laughs> <laughs> fabric of our lives. And uh, anyway, my husband, unbeknownst to me, had saved all those letters from the publishers. He said, let's look at these again. And I did, and I thought my son was right. And so I took a chance, and I realized what a great chance it was. I spent my whole adult life in front of the camera. I've been very private about my private life, but a lot of things you've seen. You've seen the Emmys. Yes. <laughs> and, and Dancing with the Stars. And, and Regis, and Broadway, and Saturday Night Live, and a lot of things that you have witnessed. But I thought, you know, you've seen the public version, but I wanted to bring you in and tell you the whole story. Those are the public things. And along the way, some very amazing people, okay, there may not be scandal, but a lot of interesting things to tell you about a lot of interesting people along the way, like Marvin Hamlish, who came into my life and helped me get ready for Broadway, and exactly what it takes to get ready to play the lead in a Broadway play and go in after Bernadette Peters in a Broadway <laughs> play in that musical. Uh, many other wonderful, interesting people have crossed my life, and so I share those stories with you. And some personal things, some of them very funny, some of them very romantic, and some of them very challenging, because nobody gets away without the challenges. I have my share, too, and uh, I, I tell you about those too. 
And there's a takeout section in the back. Some of my favorite things, some of my favorite music, uh, and even who I might be if I wasn't me. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy the ride. My goal in writing this was to make the reader feel that we were just sitting across the table from each other or sitting on the couch next to each other. And uh, that's the buzz I'm getting back, and nothing could make me more happy. I hope you enjoy hearing these stories, and, and I hear it's a fun read, and that's what I wanted it to be, so enjoy it. Thank you all so much for being here, and is it possible to have some questions and answers? I would love that. Yes? Is there anything we can do to stop the cancellation of the show? <laughs> anything you want us to do? Thank you so much. Can I take this mic off so we can yes, yes share this with the audience? The question, did you all hear the question? No. Uh, the question was, uh, here, I'll let you ask the question if you don't mind. Oh. Is there anything we can do to stop the cancellation of the show? <laughs> this is a lovely question. Uh, I will say that I'm so happy, first of all, that I wrote the book before there was any, even the rumor came out. So that, you know, I wrote the book legitimately, I poured my heart and soul into it, and it was written not in response to any bad news. It's really the way it is and the way it's been. Uh, so I'm glad about that. And the rumor started about two days before the book launched, on March 29th. I really thought it was just a rumor. It turned out to be more than a rumor. And uh, we have fans on fire across the country. Uh, the best thing to do is to watch because we're on the air for four more months and Agnes Nixon is a tiger, as I just told Channel 12 News. She has been allowed back in to do the writing of the show that has her name on it and she should have been allowed in a lot. She should never have been uh, pushed aside. In any case, she and Lorraine Broderick and uh, all the good writers are just writing like crazy because we want to give the fans back a uh, gift and make lemonade out of this lemon. And uh, I can tell you that the, the story is, is terrific and a lot of your favorite people will be coming back. In terms of saving it, I don't know if that can happen. I don't know if the network would reverse their, their feeling about this. But um, I think they, as they've written a TV guide, we, we believe, and I know the fans do, that the network has underestimated mm -hmm. the fans. Yeah. And uh, there is, I did an interview with Nancy O'Dell on ET a few days ago, and the producer of that piece told me that never in the history of E.T. have they had so much uh, fan, re fan interest and, and on their Facebook page, on E.T.'s Facebook page, in their whole history, than trying to keep all my children. So I can't tell you how grateful I am, and I'm sure I share that with the rest of all my children. If you go on the All My Children Fan Club website, they are organizing everyone so that all of the groups who want to save all my children or who just want to express themselves can do it in the most organized way. But thank you for that lovely question. Thank you. And everybody who asked me even about the rumors, and this was good, around the country, the whole country, Cincinnati, Washington, Atlanta, Minneapolis, would ask me, is there any truth to that horrible rumor? You know, that tells me a lot of good things right there. Can we donate to save the show? Oh, thank you. I think ABC has plenty of money. I think they're just allocating in a different way, but thank you. The best thing to do is donate your, your time, you know, to watch. Nielsen does not accurately measure uh, anything except network audience watched at the time. Someone and then ask them. Uh, besides Facebook, do you have a website? Yes, I, I do have a website, and it's a simple one, susanlucci.com. Thank you for asking. I'm just curious if you mentioned uh, Nielsen. Do they know when people are taping, like, you know, the teeth owing or whatever? The poll takers, do they know that people are I, watching I, the show? I think that people are, I think the network is aware that people are watching but it, it is not yet accurately measured. And people typically, since the beginning with All My Children, because we are on at the lunch hour, I have watched from uh, college dorms and frat houses and sorority houses and hospital cafeterias and uh, you know public places. So I know that they always took it into account. 
until, until now when they seem only to be going according to Nielsen. Even SoapNet, uh, which was actually a creation of the head of ABC Daytime, uh, is not measured by Nielsen. So it somehow doesn't seem right because so many of, of the viewers are there, they're just watching at a different time in a different way.